Hi, I'm Nicholas Fernandez. I'm a computational scientist from the Human Immune Monitoring Center at Icon School of Medicine at Mount Sinai. And this video is going to walk you through how you can try Cluster Grammar 2 on the cloud using MyBinder. So we're going to start at the Cluster Grammar 2 dash notebooks repository on GitHub. This repository contains several example notebooks to walk you through analyzing different data sets. So for this example, we're going to click the launch um, Jupyter Lab badge. So we're opening this in a new tab. So this can take um, sometimes uh, anywhere between 30 seconds to a few minutes to launch, depending on whether the image has been built. So we, uh, okay, so now we have Jupyter, launch, Jupyter Lab starting. So this is the new interface for um, Jupyter that is being built, the new front end. So from this, we can launch the notebooks that we have in our repository. So if we double click the notebooks um, folder, we see three notebooks. We're gonna start with the 1.0 running cluster grammar two. So if we double click that, it takes us to the notebook and uh, starts up a, a Jupyter kernel and a, a Python kernel. So if we start executing the first few lines, we are going to first um, import some libraries like pandas and numpy and cluster grammar two. And then we're going to load an example data set we, we have uh, called rc2cats, which is kind of a small um, little uh, gene expression snippet from the cancer cell and encyclopedia. And now we're going to view our, our sort of toy data set. And, um, now we're visualizing the data set using cluster grammar here. So we're loading the data frame and then saying uh, generate a widget. And so now we get this interactive widget. We can zoom in and out. And we're looking at a small gene expression data set. So we have some cancer cell lines um, as columns and genes as rows. And we can you can start to play around with the interactivity of cluster grammar. So you can hover over gene names. It will look up the gene, um, the full name and uh, RefSeq information from a, a tool called the Harmonizome. And you can also uh, reorder your data. So you can say, um, rank your cell lines by overall gene expression and find different patterns in your data, or rank your cell lines by the expression of a single gene and be able to, to sort of interactively explore your, your data set. So uh, the next section of the notebook generates a, a little bit of larger data set, uh, a data frame that has a thousand rows and a thousand columns of just uh, random numbers to just show you how we can visualize a larger data set and how we can upload the data set via a pandas data frame. So we're now, uh, we now generated a heat map of this um, million data set or million data point data set. So we can zoom in and out of this random matrix um, and explore it in the same way we would any real data set. So one nice thing that we can do using Jupyter Lab is actually upload our own data onto the cloud. So um, we're going to go ahead and obtain a, a, another data set from the Cluster Grammar web app. So if you look for Cluster Grammar um, web, then you'll see this web application. And we're just going to use this just to obtain a, uh, a data set um, from a project called the MNIST. So it's actually uh, an image data set of um, handwritten digits. So this is an example of that, that data set. So we've downloaded a matrix with um, 500 uh, rows and 300 columns. And now we're going to uh, upload that data set from our downloads here. So now we upload it. And we're now uploading this data to the cloud. And we can just change the path to um, large 500 by 300. And now we've uploaded the, we're uploading the data to the cloud here. And uh, we're going to visualize that data set. So now we're reviewing the, our own customized data. So this can actually shows you how you can use my binder to actually explore your own data without having to, um, in, in basically it's a little mini web application. So we're, uh, this particular data set, we've added categories to our columns. So our columns are handwritten digits. So if you hover over a uh, column, it'll show you the, uh, the digit. Um, and then if you um, hover over the rows, these are the actual pixels of the images. So we can see here that specific that handwritten uh, digit images are actually clustering based on their identity. So we see like a bunch of ones clustering over here, um, threes clustering over here, and we can reorder all of our handwritten digits by their identity. And then we can reorder the pixels based on how close they are to the center of the image. And we see obvious patterns like zeros have uh, very little um, pixel intensity in the center, which makes sense. But then you also see uh, other patterns and other numbers. So we encourage you to, to try out Cluster Grammar 2 uh, using my binder and, um, and explore your data. So thank you.